and movable type. Innovations that all came from outside Europe, but were seized upon by Europeans in the Middle Ages to produce the ultimate transmitter of knowledge. The printing press. The written word could now spread quickly and accurately across Europe and Asia. The modern world would be impossible without the development of writing. But there's another part of the world where a new system of writing was invented independently. In southern Mexico, at least two and a half thousand years ago, native people developed a way of working with symbols that evolved into the Mayan script. But if the Maya had writing, why didn't it spread south to the Andes and help the Incas become literate? For Diamond, the answer lies in the shape of the continents. Here are Europe and Asia forming the continent of Eurasia, a giant continent but it's stretched out from east to west and narrow from north to south. The American continent is long from north to south, narrow from east to west, very narrow at Panama where it narrows down to less than 100 miles. The two continents are of the same lengths, they're about 8,000 miles in maximum dimensions, but Eurasia is 8,000 miles from east to west, and the Americas are 8,000 miles from north to south. It's as if these continents were rotated 90 degrees of each other. Diamond has already shown that crops and animals could spread easily east and west across Eurasia. Because places at the same latitude automatically share the same day length and a similar climate and vegetation. But the American continents were the opposite of Eurasia. A journey from one end of the Americas to the other is a journey from north to south. A journey through different day lengths, different climate zones, and dramatically different vegetation. These basic differences hindered the spread of crops and animals, as well as people, ideas, and technologies. The people of the Andes were chronically isolated, without access to writing or almost any other innovation from elsewhere in the Americas. By contrast, Pizarro and his men were geographically blessed. As Spaniards, they enjoyed the benefit of technologies and ideas that had spread easily across Eurasia. The events of 1532 were clearly influenced by deep causes over which no individual Spaniard or Inca had any control. The shape of the continents, the distribution of plants and animals, the spread of Eurasian technology. These were facts of geography. And at almost every turn of the drama, geography was tilted in favor of Europeans. the morning of November 16th, 1532. 
Atahualpa has agreed to meet the Spaniards in the town of Cajamarca and sends his entourage ahead of him. But he makes a fateful decision that his soldiers should not carry weapons. The Indians were musicians and dancers. They were soldiers but unarmed. Why would Atahualpa unarm his own soldiers? Why? Because he was in the festivity. He was celebrating. He wasn't going to war. He was going for a celebration so that the whole people could see how the alleged gods would run away in fear. The fact that some people believed that the Spaniards were gods would play better in the hands of Atahualpa's purpose. If I know they are not gods and I defeat the gods, then of course everybody will be with me. But what if I defeat the gods with no show of force at all? Then I am beyond the gods. Atahualpa and his men enter Cajamarca. The Spaniards are waiting, hidden from view. There were five or six thousand men, and behind them the figure of Atahualpa seated on a very fine litter, lined with feathers and embellished with gold and silver. Many of us pissed ourselves out of sheer terror. The square is filled with Atahualpa's people, but there's, there's not one Spaniard at sight. Atahualpa asks, where are these dogs? One of his uh, right hands answers, they have run away because they are afraid of the magnificent Inca. Of course, the whole crowd listened to this and believed that this was the case. Me presento ante vosotros en nombre de la cristiandad. Pizarro sends out his priest to confront Atahualpa. Para enseñaros el camino de la verdad. The conquistadors are obliged to try and convert native people before any resort to violence. Atahualpa has never seen a book before. He doesn't know what to do with it. At that moment, with the crowd absolutely unprepared, the horses come. There was massive panic. Just imagine the scene in Cayamarca. The Incas hadn't seen horses before. And these aren't ordinary horses. These are Spanish horses. Fierce, big, fighting horses. They could get in amongst men. They were trample men and they made the most excellent platform. From the horse, you could stab down to the left, stab down to the right. You could cut, you could scythe, hacking all about you. If only the Incas had known that what you had to do against cavalry was stand firm, then they'd have been all right. They had superior numbers, but they didn't know that. They fled, they broke ranks, and then the horsemen could get in amongst them, and they cut them down. <laughs> 